Welcome. In this episode, we will talk about filing claims on lawsuits against sheriffs and police officers when you're on child support. Yes, this is, video is long overdue. We've talked about it in the past, but now we're going to get into some detail because there are some exciting news that has happened over the last few months that has made this even more possible. Now, we've talked about how to avoid going to jail based on what's called a copious warrant from the child support office. This video is different. This one is about actually filing lawsuits against once you have been arrested by these police officer. And we start off with a game changer. Again, this is a game changer. Stay tuned to, till the end. We have some more exciting news on this topic. Now, in order to sue the police officer, it starts off with this case that was decided recently on April 4th, 2022. And it's a case called Thompson versus Clark. And this case went all the way to Supreme Court out of the Second Circuit. In essence, in summary, this particular case was the plaintiff, Larry Thompson, was charged with resisting arrest and obstructing an investigation when he attempted to stop police from entering his apartment in response to a false claim regarding child abuse. As you know, uh, many cases involving child support, the mothers always seem to claim uh, abuse of some type, whether emotional, physical. Now, comment below if you don't think that's that's true. Uh, it goes on that he was prosecuted, however, he wasn't fully charged. So Thompson sued for damages under Section 1983, where he alleged that his Fourth Amendment violation was a Fourth Amendment violation. Officers are on the scene. Officers are on the scene. This is the police! Open up! This is the police! Open up! Suspect is in custody. So let's look at Section 1983. If you know this already, it's okay. It's Title 42 USC, United States Code, 1983, and it reads, Every person who, under the color of any state statute, ordinance, regulations, customs, in any state or territory and subject any citizen or persons within the jurisdiction of the United States to deprive them of any rights and privilege immune. That is what is called secured by the Constitution. And that party is liable for that. Second, any lawsuit brought, the plaintiff must prove that he or she has been deprived of a right secured by the Constitution and laws, and second, that the defendant was acting under the color of any state law. So again, the only requirement for bringing a lawsuit is you must prove that the rights were secured under the Constitution and the person is acting under any state law. Now, I would add this particular case, Thompson versus Clark, to our already existing, the five Supreme Court cases you should already know, and I would strongly encourage you to learn these five by visiting our website, which is childsupport.newsendler.com, where you can learn more about the top these five case laws, as well as add this particular law, and we'll explain further. So this is a follow-on to segments that we've done on what is called using the Department of Justice letter of 2016, we created five categories in which that you can bring a lawsuit. And now we're covering number three, which is called the enforcement section under 666. And this is where police officers, sheriffs, wardens, public prisons, even the clerk of the court can be sued under this category. And basically what it states is that action under 1983 that they are liable right because they carry the badge under what is called color of law and that they are subject to the fourth amendment now the case law surrounding that is Peyton versus New York second circuit 
and Monell versus New York City Department of Social Services. Comment below if you understand the Monell versus New York City Department case. So notably under this is that the claim that you may be arrested for non-support or non-payment of child support. Hello, my name is Chris. And in this session, this is a game changer. I've said this many times in many videos, but this one is a game changer. And it's as a result of a recent change by the Supreme Court. I would like to take this opportunity for everyone. If you haven't fixed your credit report, use this opportunity. Repair your credit if you're on child support. You can go to our website. We have the information and the details on that. Fix your credit report. Leverage your wealth. If you have any questions on any of our videos or this specific video, please feel free to reach us at chrish289 at protonmail.com. We also ask for donations to keep our channel going. Again, we bring you extensive research that takes time, energy, and folks for in which to take the time out to do this. And all we're asking for is your support, as well as subscribe to our channel. We're also available on our podcast, Child Support Made Simple, on Apple, Amazon, and others. Now, we've done a video called Father Father Lawsuit and have won. Uh, please check out that video. We also covered additional lawsuits, um, such as uh, suing the clerk of the court as well. We are now at the DMV. Uh, this we covered this lawsuit as well. Again, check out that video. So let's get back to Thompson versus Clark, and the Supreme Court decision says the court recognized that unreasonable search and legal process is covered under what is called the Fourth Amendment. The Constitution claim that this is analogous to what is called malicious prosecution, and specific issues relating to criminal charges without probable cause. Uh, Justice Brett Kavanaugh wrote the leading decision on this, or as I said, wrote the, the, the lead on the decision. And this is a drastic change. What he's basically now saying is, whether or not you were charged or taken to what is called prosecution, you can start your lawsuit under what is called malicious prosecution. Why is this a game changer? In the past, you would have to wait until the prosecution of your arrest is complete. That could take three months, five months, even a year. And by then, the statute of limitation would have ran out if it turns out that this was an illegal arrest. So this is the game changer right here. Basically, as soon as you're released from the charge, you can start your lawsuit. This, in the old days, you could not do that. Now you can. So, what Kavanaugh has now expanded on is what is called a cause of action under abuse of power and abuse of process, as well as malicious prosecution under the Fourth Amendment. These are very serious claims that you can make against police and police officer and it was unavailable to us because of the restriction in the past, which says you had to wait until the process was complete before you can start the lawsuit. So let's review those charges again. So abuse of power is the improper use by someone who has the authority, which is a public officer, under civil or criminal charges. That is, it was considered malicious or deliberate misuse of the function. Abuse of process refers to the improper use of civil or criminal legal procedures for an unintended, again, malicious, perverse reason. It is malicious, it's deliberate, and it's a misuse of this process which was unjustified. Next, malicious prosecution. This occurs when one party has knowingly with malicious intent initiated a baseless litigation against another party. This includes both criminal and civil. 
So in essence, here it is, whether it's civil or criminal, you can start a lawsuit under these statute, as well as this falls under the 14th Amendment, where it says, no state shall make or enforce any laws which shall abridge the privileges, immunities of citizens in the United States. Now here's where the game changer begins, right? There is another section to the 1983 called private individual liability. And it reads, the private individual may be subject to 1983 if he or she willfully collaborate with an official state actor in depriving a federal right. And that is Dwarves versus City of New York, as well as an agreement between those private parties. So who are these private parties? Well, Title IV-D is not a state agency. It is a separate agency within the Department of, of health. We know that from my videos. Well, here's what you can do. Not only can you sue the police officer for the arrest, but you can sue that judge or magistrate or attorney that initiated the arrest. This is the game changer. When that judge or magistrate said to you, I'm going to arrest you, you have now added that person to the lawsuit as well as the, the police officer. This is the fundamental game changer. Now, you've heard people on the internet says, well, I've been doing um, child support for years, 10 years or more, and they're the expert. Well, I'm not sure that that's a requirement because this was a recent change in the law. It only got changed on April 4th of 2022. I'm not sure 10 years of experience could have predicted this, nor can 10 years of experience has any benefit with understanding the law that just got changed. So, you know, again, please comment below uh, your opinion on that. So why is this significant? Why should everyone now in the child support should understand this, this ruling? It, let's go back to the Supreme Court. It says a decision in one state or one court may be accepted by all courts, as well as it cannot be reopened. And this decision was done by Chief Justice Marshall back in the case law called Abelman versus Booth and Howlett versus Road. That simply means that this change by the, con even though it's, it's Brett Kavanaugh is a Supreme Court, which is the law of the land, there is no defense in any states. You can use this to your advantage. Next, and I often get this question, it's a case law called Haywood versus Curtis Downs. This was by Justice Stevens, again, Supreme Court Justice. Re it reads, the federal system of government, state as well as federal court, has jurisdiction over suits brought under 42 U.S.C. 1983. Yes, you can start your lawsuit in both federal or state court. Again, I get this question, should you file in federal? Should you file in state? It doesn't matter, it's what's convenient to you. Here, Justice Stevens says, we are one government. Wherever you wanna start, in this particular case, which is Keith Haywood versus Downs, New York had set up this separate process that says, well, all 1983 federal cases must go through this, pro this process. Well, this decision, the justice says, no, 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 no. You need to shut that down. Shut it down. Whether state or federal, you can bring a 1983 case. So one of the requirements of a 1983 case, we talked about that, that they must be acting under color of law. But here's the next requirement, and this is very, very important. You may have to provide what is called a notice of claim. It says here, the state is not required to answer the notice of claim or a claim for which you want to file, but you, as a plaintiff, must provide or inquire whether you need to file a notice of claim before you file your lawsuit, or else your case will be dismissed. And that particular case law is called Felder versus Casey. Now here's something else. 
fraud upon the court is committed when a representative of the court, the judge, the magistrate, misrepresents the court, right? Or does something that is unconstitutional. Well, here's what here's what's important. Malicious prosecution is unconstitutional based on the Thomas versus Clark. Like I said, this is a game changer when it comes to filing lawsuits. So now every man that's in child support, you should be learning this. You should be ready to file lawsuits. Now, one of the things that we suggest uh, that you present to every everyone, the attorneys, the judges, is called a color of law form. Now, the color law form is not a get out of jail or, or punishment. It's just a notice. Again, we have that on our masterclass website, Learn, that is. But you still need to submit a notice of claim. So on our website, which is called childsupport.newzendler.com. Now, here's what I said is a special for anyone in the New York area. They recently made a change to 1099 law. Uh, please check out that video. But here's the best part. That new change in the Thompson versus Claus malicious intent, you can now have a claim against if you were subjected to the change of the 1099. Yes, you now have a remedy. So if you have any questions on what we've covered in this video or any other video, please feel free to email us at chrish289 at protonmail.com. And we do ask, please subscribe. If you're new here, please subscribe. If you're old also, please hit the subscribe button again, as well as the notification bell. And as always, we bring you this information. We do our research. And all we're asking for are small donation to help us to continue to bring this information. So here we are at the end. Please feel free to select any of the videos here on the screen. But now there's a game changer. You can sue the police or the sheriff despite the fact whether your case was settled or not or the arrest was illegal. You can start your lawsuit as soon as possible. Thanks. Have a great day.